Welcome everyone. My name is Rajnikanth Patel. I am a retired executive and author of children's books and I'll be the moderator today. Uh, let me introduce uh, Dipakananji, who our uh, ho uh, our speaker today. He is a holistic inner science expert. He has a bachelor's in he has a bachelor's in electrical engineering and has several years of experience in the engineering industry. From very childhood, he had an inclination to be celebrated and was in search of answers to the puzzles of everyday life. His answers were obtained when he received self-realization through the grace of self-realized holistic scientist V. M. Patel in 1983. Since then, he has pursued his dream to work selflessly to spread the message of holistic inner science and life living experiences to uplift the entire humankind towards inner peace, harmony, freedom, happiness by answering the questions uh, of the puzzles of their life. He has devoted his entire life in studying the holistic inner science and visited rural and urban areas throughout the world. He's an expert on holistic inner science and interpersonal relationship. He has attended the uh, many seminars, conferences, QA sessions. Welcome, Dipakananji. Thank you, and greetings to all. Uh, in oneness, I'm very happy and glad to be here with you today. And I heartily thank you for giving me this wonderful opportunity of sharing my experience of holistic inner science. Thank you, Mr. Patel. Thank you very much, uh, Dipakanji, and also we like to thank you for taking your time early in the morning uh, to be with us. Let me explain a little bit about what is holistic or inner science or vitrack science. You know, there are two aspects of uh, science. One is a material or outer science, which is also termed as a physical uh, science. It is a science of ever-changing thing or relative thing that is full of activities which we see all around in the world have a perfect chronological and stepping. Another aspect is inner science or the science of the pure soul, which is real, unchanging with knowledge, function only, it's without chronology, which is stepless. It's called holistic inner science or Vitrak Vignan as perceived by the holistic scientist, Mr. A.M. Patel. It is a science of the relative and the real. It is a science of one's own life and living and encompassing mind, speech, and body along with the sur surroundings. In fact, it is a perpetual science working at the core of very existence. It has solutions to the world's problems, puzzles, like what, how does the world function? How all living beings function? How do we have happy, happy, harmonious living? And what are the law of karmas, etc., etc.? And on the spiritual side, it, it talks about soul, talks about karma, it uh, makes you understand about life and liberations. All these eternal questions have been kept uh, bothering mankind from time immemorial, are fundamentally explained by this holistic inner science. Uh, now, uh, having our science, uh, we had uh, some homework. Observe the feeling parts of likes and licks, dislikes with mindfulness of body function and not self, soul self. Anybody then homework? I will, I did a little bit homework uh, and it was very interesting to go and dwell into why I'm liking and disliking things or and especially people. And I come to, came to the conclusion that my belief is the cause of the root cause of dislikes and dislikes so i need to really really dwell on my why and on my belief and change my belief so anything any comment Dipakaranji? yes i would like to share my experience uh, <clears throat> uh, i also did a small self-study in fact it's an ongoing process for one who has known this science for years together and naturally I try living this science. Uh, the idea behind giving this uh, homework was 
to differentiate and demark between the body self and the soul self activity. So here we wanted to say, even the feeling part is body self activity, not the soul self activity, because the feelings are well, very well known by the soul self. So I observe that, and I give some example. Uh, see, it was cold yesterday, although the day was warm. This is body self activity. I came to know as soul self. I had a good sleep, body self activity. I came to know that I had good sleep. I didn't like the way my colleague talked with me. I know that as soul self. I had a wonderful chat with my friend today. I failed to perform in my driving test. I am sometimes very bad dealing with people. I went for a long drive. All these activities are of the body self, whereas the soul self simply knows. I was caught uh, by the traffic police for over speeding. So that again, I came to know. So the conclusion over here, what we want to drive and focus is all these feeling activities of likes and dislikes are of the body self that is temporary aspect of uh, <clears throat> the small I, uh, whereas all knowing activities are of the soul self that is capital I. This is how you can feel, understand and experience your soul self and get an idea as knower only and understand the name bearer body self as doer even of all the feeling activities because these feelings come and go. All the temporary aspects of our body self and of, are of the body self and all the permanent aspects of knowing are of the soul self. So claiming to suffer the feelings makes you a sufferer, uh, which inadvertently would make you project doership and would blame on others and then pass through yet another cycle of suffering. Although these <coughs> uh, present feelings are mere karmic effects or results of the past doings, misdoings that we would say meant for learning life lessons and for us to correct and lead us to freedom. But without holistic inner science, we get bound into incessant rounds of birth that cycles. So that's how when you know that I as soul self was or am knowing only and all these feelings help me come out of my mistakes lead me to holistic inner science, finally to freedom. Thank you very much. This is a really good ex example of how uh, you have used the holistic inner science and hopefully <coughs> all our uh, audience will start uh, doing this experiment also. Now let me, there are some questions from the past, but I think uh, we will go into today's subject because they're all related. So today's subject is, we went through the holistic inner science. We went through the uh, principles of holistic science. And now we want to talk about the tools of holistic science, which uh, we can use in everyday life to become happy, uh, harmonious living. And also, like you said, dwell more and more into uh, our self's activity versus the soul activity. True, very true. So, <clears throat> uh, just to wrap up, uh, we have seen until now what is holistic inner science as life living science uh, with its founding principles of <clears throat> discrimination free vision that is feeling of oneness with every living being and perfect humility, that is modesty with all the smallest among all the living 
being. That is, what is it that I am the smallest among all living beings? On which uh, the holistic inner science stands firmly and perpetually. Now, the best part of this science is it is at the core of our existence. Rather, we would say it is at the core of every existence. Uh, and as we have seen, <clears throat> not by virtue of knowledge or understanding, but by its very nature, this is our observation, every living being has the knowledge and that feeling or experience of its existence that I exist. Uh, you would say, astitva ka bhaan jiv matra ko hai. And that is the reason everyone wants to live. They seek happiness, doesn't want unhappiness or pain or suffering of any kind. And the bitter truth is one cannot survive and live without eating or consuming other. This is a very bitter truth of our life. We can survive only by eating living stuff. You cannot eat anything that is dead. We see all around that there is struggle for survival. And the famous quote of Sarah Bernhardt, life begets life in a way means this only. It means only life produces life. Non-living stuff cannot produce life. So for life to survive, it must consume life that is living stuff only. Further, <clears throat> one doesn't have the knowledge or understanding of one's self-identity or truth or essence or one's fundamental nature as to who am I. What it means, vastutva ka bhaan kisi ko nahi hai. And due to that, none has the understanding, knowledge, or even experience of completeness or wholesomeness or absoluteness. Uh, we can say, purnatva ka bhaan, gyan, ya anubhav kisi ko bhi nahi hai. And uh, consequently, uh, living beings wander in the four life forms for infinite times, for infinite cycles, and for infinity. And that is the wonderful and obvious reason that the world or universe we see all around uh, is nothing but bulk of our collection of four life forms of living beings only and that is going to exist perpetually and that's it. The world apparently is seen as it was born and it's going to die is truly passing from minima to maxima but it's because it is revealed by the holistic scientists that <clears throat> the universe is perpetual. And the fact, the ultimate fact is every living being is complete, wholesome and absolute. What one needs is the understanding, knowledge and experience of one's truth or essence or fundamental nature as to who am I. And that is all holistic inner science all about. That's a good summary about uh, holistic science that you did. So now, you know, to be happy, harmonious, uh, what are the tools that, right. uh, you know, we can, uh, holistic science uh, tells us so we can be always happy? Fine. So this will lead you to the universal truth of, uh, that is, holistic inner science will ultimately lead us to our self-identity, which ultimately makes us self-realize that I am pure self, pure knowledge, that is I am pure soul, which eventually ends up into total experiential knowledge of one's absoluteness, completeness or wholesomeness. It is freedom from the vicious word that cycle or liberation or nirvana. 
Yeah, but there and are intermediate that, steps, right? That right, right, go. right. So, so to reach this, this is holistic inner science. It all begins with the following holistic inner science revelations of precise nature's laws that are working all around behind the curtains of human intellect uh, that are given as tools for its acquisition. So let us see the very first one. It has revealed as tool because you have to be constantly aware of this. You are wholly and solely responsible for yourself. So this is the tool, very vital tool. You are wholly and solely responsible for yourself. Now to understand that for your success or happiness or failure or pain and suffering, you are only responsible because the nature is absolutely impartial in its dealings with everyone. Every happening is a natural happening as an effect in the scheme of mother nature for which previous evidential causes are only responsible for example you get good grades as an effect for your hard work which acts as evidential cause in the scheme of mother nature so by keeping in mind that you are wholly and solely responsible although uh, it's the science but then we tend to forget and blame others for our failure. But when we succeed, we take pride of our hard work. But truly, both are results of our own doing. Further, uh, one must resolve to live with such care, humility and vigilance, that is mindfulness, that I don't want to hurt any living being through my mind, speech and body, that is, my thoughts, words, and action. Now, when I have resolved not to hurt anyone, every time I hurt anyone, even knowingly, will definitely tinkle a caution bell within me and say, hey, you made a mistake. And you will definitely uh, correct your mistake by feeling sorry and naturally reinforce your decision not to hurt anyone here onwards. This will eventually make you come across a living holistic scientist who will further lead you to this science. Further, understand in life that whatever happens is just. This is because why things happen in my life is just because sufferer is at fault. So to avoid clashes, that is to avoid further damage by hurting others today, please adjust everywhere. So the phrase, the tools are, whatever happens is just, sufferer is at fault, avoid clashes and adjust everywhere. Let us understand that every happening in the world around is natural because every living being, every living form is natural. Things just happen in the nature. Whatever you see around happening in the world is merely effects of the previous cause, which we are unable to comprehend because of our limited and uh, egoistic intellect. Holistic scientist uh, with his far-sighted impartial vision has seen and understood the subtle working of the nature and has revealed this fact of nature's cause effect happening with great generosity through this revelation. Whatever happens is just. Further, you cannot suffer without your fault. So in any situation, look around who is suffering and it is his or her fault that makes one suffer. Innocent never have to suffer. This is natural law. If you want to come out of this situation and regain your happiness and maintain your relationship, 
then accept your mistake internally with the inner science understanding and decide to adjust in the situation. Once you decide, your mind will naturally follow your decision. Your dealing will become amicable and you will avoid clash. This will make your situation real, win-win, and that's great. So for today, I believe uh, these are the wonderful tools. They are, there are many other tools we will discuss in further uh, talks, but these are the tools given by Holistic Inner Science most primarily for pacifying any situation, which further leads us to know, understand, and live holistic inner science for our own peace, happiness, and harmonious living in this apparently mean and selfish world. Thank you. Thank you. This is very good. Uh, you can, uh, excellent tips. Uh, and uh, I'm sure we have a lot of questions on that. Now, uh, Sheila Ben is here and she had two past questions uh, uh, that was, why is happiness considered suffering? That was one of her questions. Then we'll take the second question and also she has a third question. Okay, fine. Let, let us see that. Now, we all experience that happiness is a temporary aspect of our life situation wherein we feel good when something good happens in our life as per our desire. And uh, we also know that that happening don't last forever. They have an arrival time and a departure time. So the happening subside. And with the uh, happening going away, my happiness also goes. So when the situation change, my happiness goes and I become unhappy. And you start feeling bad and your suffering starts. So this is the reason it is considered suffering. And because the happiness or unhappiness, they are connected with the body, body being temporary, happiness is temporary. And considering the temporary aspect of happiness, it is considered as suffering. Because there is a beginning yeah. of feeling good and there is end of that feeling good, so it is suffering. If it is bliss, then it should remain forever. Then it is not suffering. Shaila Ben, does that make sense? Yeah, so <clears throat> like the saying goes, all good things come to an end. That's the saying. So that's what it is, like happiness will come to an end. Yeah, that's a very good uh, uh, explanation, uh, Deepakananji. Thank you so much. Okay, on the second question of Shaila Ben, you know, she was looking at some of the uh, quotes yeah. from holistic science, uh, yeah. holistic inner science uh, about innocence, that we have to look at everybody innocently. So her question was, you know, how can we look at a murder, murderer or a rapist as innocent? Okay. Here again, we must try understanding this situation from two different viewpoints. One is nature's viewpoint, that is holistic inner science viewpoint, and the other is societal or world viewpoint. Now, as per nature's viewpoint, which is purely scientific, it is based on cause effect principle, cause and effect principle. It basically says nothing comes from nothing. Every happening is an effect or uh, of one or multiple causes. Here it identifies two individuals. One is the giver and the other is the receiver. If you see in any situation like a murder or a rapist, one is the giver, the doer of the crime, and the other is the receiver of the pain. Giver does something, does something, and the receiver suffers because of the giver's doing. So today, giver is the nature's 
delivery person only, whereas receiver is the sufferer. Holistic inner science, while revealing nature's law in this regard, has said you would suffer only because of your mistakes. This is because the suffering has come only as an effect of your previous mistakes and specifically to you. Why did it happen to you? Although today the giver is merely the nature's instrument, he has definitely committed a mistake today of doing something inhuman and he will get his dues from the same nature in the near future. It is because in nature nothing goes unnoticed. This is commonly expressed in the worldly languages, what goes around comes around. Holistic inner science has category revealed, categorically revealed this as whatever happens is just. So nature says, look around for who has suffered. It is his fault that has brought him the suffering today. Nature works on the principle of scientific circumstantial evidences. The scientific word is very important because those evidences which are not seen physically but are scientifically present for things to happen as an effect in the scheme of mother nature. This is nature's viewpoint. So nature's viewpoint you, we have to keep in our mind for our inner understanding because nothing comes from nothing. Cannot, not, anything cannot happen without a cause. Let us see the societal or world viewpoint. This is as per people's viewpoint and belief. And it is as per man-made rules and laws. That may differ from country to country, individual to individual. Here, that is in the worldview or societal viewpoint, belief plays a vital role. Society considers sufferer as innocent, poor sufferer. And because it sees the doer it blames the doer for the suffering of the innocent. Although the principle is sufferer cannot be innocent. And it is, although it is an open contradiction to consider a sufferer as an innocent person, but this is world language. The principle on which society works is circumstantial evidence. And in the prevailing circumstances, you can easily prove the sufferer as innocent and the doer or the giver of the suffering as the person who has committed the crime, the mistake. But depending on the crime committed and as per country's penal code, uh, one would be punished. This is societal viewpoint. So a murderer or a rapist is finally and definitely at fault today, but he will be punished by the same nature appropriately at an opportune time in future. But today one who has who was murdered or raped got caught in the nature and punished for his previous mistake and for which one is suffering today. This is holistic inner science, the perfect science of nature where all puzzles will get solved with total conviction and complete intellectual satisfaction. Eventually, you will become normal and natural to enjoy the bliss of your inner soul self, who you are. So that's it. Thank you. Does that clarify it, Chilaman? Yeah, that's a very good. I mean, uh, actually, um, just today, because uh, the, the two things that happened, one in New York and one in Texas, the governor of New York was being interviewed and the host asked him, when the, the people who commit this, uh, uh, such acts, they are not jailed, they are let loose, especially if they are younger. And in fact, the, uh, the governor of New York gave them $25 each plus two gift cards. So the host asked, where is the justification? So I think in a way he was following the holistic science. 
now i mean now that you have explained uh, deepakanand ji when i uh, i mean on hindsight when i remember what the governor of new york said today on the tv why they are letting the culprits free and in fact giving them 25 dollars plus gift cards he says that give them an opportunity to realize their mistakes instead of putting them in the jail which is not going which is only going to escalate their um, uh, mindset let them lose and teach them so i think in a way probably that's a part of holistic science that he was using it without knowing what it is true actually the situation is like this we all are living in that science that wholesome science that complete science is residing right within us but because of our life situations we have committed mistakes for which we keep suffering and we are not able to comprehend understand and experience and accept i would say those inner causes which has led me to this suffering i believe uh, that i am innocent and i try to fight and retaliate by doing wrong things around but this is actually i am further damaging my story so when we realize this because i cannot hurt so these tools are really wonderful when i when i contemplate and be mindful about this as uh, like resolutions of my life then it will always caution me every time i commit those mistakes so also shelavan you had the next question on punya yeah actually um just a moment i lost that was here okay um deepakananji this is uh, uh, from dada bhagwan uh, on 28 december the thought about lakshmi he says lakshmi to punya se prapt hoti hai मेहनत से प्राप्त होती तो फिर मजदूर के पास लक्ष्मी क्यों नहीं है और यदि बुद्धि से प्राप्त होती तो पंडितों के पास क्यों नहीं है तो माय क्वेश्चन वाज पुण्य इज गुड डीड्स डज दैट मीन दैट एवरी मजदूर हु इज डूइंग हार्ड वर्क और हु इज द नानी पंडित दे हैव नॉट डन एनी पुण्य सो आई थॉट दैट लक्ष्मी गोज बिकॉज ऑफ वंस लक और बिकॉज ऑफ वंस नसीब irrespective of you have done punya or not done punya so this saying was a little confusing to me so i just wanted your thoughts on it i mean how come a mazdoor who is doing hard work if he doesn't have lakshmi that means he is always doing pap or a pandit who has gnana but doesn't have money does that mean he always does pap not punya see we have to understand in a different way we see people's activities today and uh, believe that that is his efforts today for which he must get uh, positive results but what about the um, deeds of his past uh, which is contributing to his results today although he is putting all his efforts but why did he have to put so much of efforts to get what he wants this is where the holistic inner science reveals this fact that you must have <clears throat> enough credit of punya and that what is responsible for you to get the money that is wealth lakshmi ji otherwise pandit ji pandit or the ha the the laborers they are putting lot of efforts but we have to understand that there are people who don't work all that and they get money so it is said the feeling of uh, stealing uh, feeling of uh, uh, not not feeling but talking negative about people mm. because then that curse or negativity is 
directed to the inner god and due to that the effect is you have to put a lot of efforts to earn your living so it is we have to understand that nothing goes unnoticed in the nature if you have to struggle more today for your living then it is because of some mistake for which you are punished today to work hard for your living and if you don't have to work today for your living then with that credit earn more credit spend do a lot of charity to others and that's how you will build up your credit okay thank you yeah is anybody else another question i have a question earlier you dipika you talked about circumstantial evidence what is circumstantial right. evidence circumstantial evidence is what it means uh, the physical evidence of the causes or people around what was present there that made things to happen many times there are people who have committed the crime but intelligently they haven't left any evidence for them to get caught and someone else get caught because his evidence proves to be i will say proves to be fatal for him and he gets punished so someone may say that he hasn't committed any crime today then why did he have to uh, suffer and be punished for this for which he has not done anything then the circumstantial evidence proves and uh, justifies his suffering today do you understand yeah circumstantial yeah. evidence for what he had committed in the past yeah but somehow he survived that but nature nothing gets um, go unnoticed so you will have to pay your price for all the bad things that you have done at the same time you will be uh, blessed with all the good things also for all the good things help you have done in the nature Okay. Uh thank you. Uh you have a question yeah. to the man? Yes, I do. Okay. Uh so when we uh when we talk about suffering and uh a disagreement, you know, uh, with the people normally that you have disagreements is your family members mostly. Neighbors ke sath to you know you are talking very nicely and you know uh, uh no matter how you feel and but as soon as you come home you know uh, with your children relatives sisters brothers spouses so how does this happen that uh, they are they are met because of the past circumstantial evidence see first of all we have to see every happening today as effect of the past causes people with whom you have to spend more time understand and believe that there are long or intense causes for which you are spending so much of time during the day itself out of 24 hours you are spending like 16 to 18 hours together so that is the reason very important cause that and and very uh, important i mean indication that there is some long term connectivity due to which you are spending so much time with the person the family and all that and for so many years you be with the same person for how many years mm -hmm. and see if 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 your neighbor or friend don't do something or does something then you feel bad but you don't take it too seriously 
it happened, forget it. But then with the family members, you say, no, you have a lot of claims. You blame them also, and you have a lot of claim. And that's what we have to understand that it is because of the past connectivity that you are spending so much time together. And here we must become alert and be careful dealing with them. So decide, although we say that they are our relation, they are uh, loved ones and all that, dear ones, but then they feel bad also easily. So how will you, uh, I mean, come out or resolve this matter? The basic understanding, no one should get hurt and understand that if after doing so much with the family members, they will say that, what a big deal. That was your duty and you did that. So for which I don't even have to thank you. They may say like that. Mm -hmm. So we have to understand that we have a big debt, karmic debt with these people. And that's why you have to spend your important time for them. Mm -hmm. Your, that's why it is said, uh, it's a wonderful revelation again, uh, by the holistic inner science, our body is time. And our body gets so much involved with our family people, family members, and we have to spend so much time for them. Now, what is that? You have spent your body time, you are living time for them. So here we have to understand the karmic debt for which you have to spend so much time for them. And even after doing all, you won't get any positive, uh, what do you say, uh, response from them. They say, what a big deal. That was your duty. My God, <laughs> it's not that easy to accept. <laughs> yeah. Tripta ji, thank you for your question. <laughs> yeah, Dipagaji. That was a now, wonderful question. Now, that, <laughs> I, I wish that, my husband was uh, listening to this. <laughs> Very nice, good question. Thank you so much. Dipagaji, this is now follow up of both uh, Shaila Ben and uh, Tripta Ben. So, you know, we are ripping our Punya and Pap with the past, and especially we are having a lot of uh, issues with our spouses and. Uh, close ones. So how with the tools you talked about that just everywhere, uh, first thing of course, do not hurt anybody. Now how do we be aware that for the next life, we are not carrying uh, pups, but we want to carry punya? Very good question. So as we have said, whatever happened is just. So now that you are with the uh, people surrounded in your family, accept that as just, as perfect, and there is no mistake in that. Mm -hmm. And look around during your, I mean, association. Who suffered the most? Who was benefited? Who had to slog more? who was a beneficiary of your hard work. You worked hard all your life, but then who was benefited the most? So from all the suffering, what you had to pass through in your association, then understand that that was your fault. Because of that fault, you had to suffer. So you will justify your life happening based on suffering. Do you understand? Yes, yes, yes. Because you had to suffer, all those things happen in your life. Yeah, but... Right? So now, you don't want to carry the same stuff further. Mm -mm. So here, you accept that it was my fault, due to which I had to do all this and I suffered. And you have to be with them. 
you can't just break any relation right. so the only way to further avoid any clash is you must adjust so just imagine you have two legs the left and the right the left adjusts with the right the right adjusts with the left and that's how you are able to walk yes. any miss or any loss of coordination you will be down in split second so imagine if your relations with your relations if you don't have the factor of adjustment imagine your association how long would it last you are physically present but mentally you're not so at home this is the litmus test this is the test that your mind should not differ from anyone at home especially because you spend so many hours together right so when your mind don't differ and when your mind don't differ your words will not differ they will not contradict what it means you will accept everything that happens not that you will not tell not that you cannot express you can express you can tell but nicely and uh, not with insistence uh, but express your views i believe this is what it is no 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 nothing doing we are doing like this oh fine there's no problem yeah you so, know it's in everyday life i i understand this but everyday life suppose my wife uh, my spouse tell me something and you know it's an instant reaction it's of thinking it's just you know it's your own fault don't suffer and we just forget about it and then we uh, cause uh, a pop uh, then pop starts a mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> uh, okay then no so Hello? how can we get that awareness that hey this is all pop we need to uh, build up pop punyas for the next life not pop okay i give a set of examples really wonderful question see when you keep in touch with this holistic inner science stuff you will naturally remember them mm -hmm. just imagine just imagine uh when you encounter a wall or an obstacle while walking what do you do do you ever think why this wall or this obstacle has come all of a sudden why has it come no where has it come from you see your immediate response without any evident reaction or thinking is immediately you stop and turn around and avoid any possible collision because you are going to get injured yes or no mm -hmm. correct now further while driving all of a sudden you notice that the car in front of you has shown red light meaning the driver is applying brakes and he's slowing down what would be your immediate response same thing we start to put brakes you would start applying your brakes and naturally slow down okay mm -hmm. now think how did you develop these immediate and apparently perfect response without any reactions mm -hmm. you see you are told you are taught you have your own experience of driving and living and even the car driver's manual gives such uh and several other tips along with the rules you have to follow for you to drive safely and avoid any possible collision resulting in any car accidents or personal injury there are traffic police on roads with cctv cameras put at strategic locations to keep watch on your driving and if you are caught committing any mistake then you are stopped cautioned or even fined and this has increased your vigilance and expertise in driving and you have become an expert driver you drive 
all your life safely with minimum or practically no stoppage by any traffic police or you don't even get any ticket. In the same way, when you include this holistic inner <coughs> science tools in your daily reflections, in your daily resolutions, you will naturally become mindful and vigilant about these tools and start using them immediately at the first sign of your mistake. And what is that sign of your mistake? You start suffering. The moment you feel bad, understand immediately that, hey, that is your mistake. You cannot feel bad without your mistake. And probably the most common mistake is our ego get hurt. Yes. Don't tell me anything. Yeah. I know everything. Mm. I don't like to be told. And nobody likes being told. And, and it's like uh, from your spouse, it is that birthright to tell you whatever you are doing wrong. Yes. And they know that they are always right. They never commit any mistake. They are perfect humans on this earth. Don't you, haven't you experienced this? Yes, yes. And if you want to win and again win their heart, then accept. You are right. This is world drama. So in the world drama, nothing is right and everything is right. <laughs> yes. Now how are you going to manage the situation. Nothing is right because as per holistic inner science, nothing happens in this world. <clears throat> in the sense, if she has taken thousand dollars from you, you feel I lost my thousand dollars. She feels that I, I got thousand dollars. But thousand dollars remain. Matter is indestructible. So there is no loss of material in this world, in this universe at all. Only transfer takes place. Do you understand? But why you felt bad when you lose your thousand dollars? Because you felt nice, you felt good when you received those thousand dollars. Yes. So that is the cause of your suffering. But the thousand dollars are still there. So when you view this from the perspective, total perspective, then you will say that, oh, nothing has happened in this world because things only get converted or get moved from one place to another. In totality, everything is complete and whole. Right? So yeah. that's how, when you, it's like if you remove thousand dollar from your shirt pocket and put in your pen pocket, where is it gone? You believe shirt and pen both are mine. But you don't believe that uh, Taruben is uh, Radni Patel. You feel Taruben is Taruben. So you have to change your view now. As per holistic science, Taruben is Rajni Patel EX extended. <laughs> yeah. And when you when you see that then nothing goes nowhere. If she says, tells you something, then ready by mind is telling you to do something. But you feel Taru is saying something. Yeah. I don't believe, I don't accept. That question will not arise. Then it is your internal matter. You cannot tell anyone. You should not tell anyone. Yeah. And you have to learn to deal amicably. And you say, oh, my heart. And when your heart do anything, then you feel bad. Is that? No, then that's not your heart. And no, she is your heart. And you have to prove by your living. And that's not difficult. You decide it happens. So when you decide to see Taruven as Radni only, then whatever she does is pardon. Or lifetime. No questions, no argument, everything is okay. Yep.
we 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 gonna try to do that from now onwards. Yes. And when this is realized, then life really becomes wonderful. Really, it becomes wonderful. That's how we differ by words. And due to that, we differ by our minds. And due to that, we feel difference at the body level also. <clears throat> but when words play a very vital role, when you don't differ by words, then your mind will remain united. And when your mind is united, body, although they are separate, living under the same umbrella, you will experience that oneness. And that's great. That's holistic inner science. That's Vitra Vignan. True. That is the science of the absolutes. Well, thank you very much. Uh, uh, go ahead, uh, 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 Vinod Bhai. Go ahead. Uh, Deepakanandji, I have a, a small question. Sure, yes. Uh, it was very, uh, <clears throat> very uh, <clears throat> nice to hear you. And, and there are always uh, conflicts and clashes in, in the best of the relationships. So, but if there is an argument and, uh, and a, a clash every day, then how do you resolve that? I mean, and like one person doesn't want to even argue and the other person insists, no, we must argue about it, every issue. So just imagine, okay, sorry, sorry to interrupt, go for yeah, that. No, no, that, that's it, I'm, I'm finished, yes. Okay, so whenever you encounter such a thing, then understand you are dealing with your kid. You know the kid is not going to understand anything. You will have to give up finally. And if you try to do anything, the only thing you can do is start crying. That's all he can do. So, and you don't want to hurt him also. What are you going to do? Argue with him? Fight with him? Try to make him understand? No way. He's not going to understand. He's not going to accept your argument because he wants what he wants. Right? So, uh, you don't want to argue, but Tripta Ben wants to argue. Then, uh, I mean, uh, accept that as a challenge, trying to test yourself how much uh, you get irritated and try to uh, find that as a examination for you. And finally, when you have learned to give up things, then you will not have any problem. Don't tell them you're wrong. Don't tell that I am right. Then you will not have any problem. Give whatever they want, because whatever you have to give, it is not yours. Whatever they are asking from you, it is not yours. And if it is yours, they cannot ask from you. That's when you understand, then you will not have any problem. Situations will arise. Situation arises with everyone in life. No one is exception. But one who has decided to give, decided not to hurt the other person, decided to adjust only, then you have no problem. That acceptance first is important because, see, after all, even if you prove yourself right and she gets upset, what have you gained? You're going to feel sorry. Then you'll say, oh, there was, there was no reason to prove myself right. Even if I was wrong, even if I was proved wrong, if she is happy, I'm very happy. Do you, you want to see her happy or not? That's, that's why you married. That's what you decided. I'll keep my wife happy all my life. So it is like, you know, it's a very funny thing. You die for the other person and the other person lives. So you don't have to die really. 
but it's how you live with the other person. Yeah, but let's take an example, Dipagaranji. Uh, suppose the other person wants to argue or pour a point. What is your recourse? I mean, physically, uh, mentally, you say, yeah, you are Raise right. Raise your hands. <laughs> Raise your hands. I am sorry, I surrender. But then they will say, I don't accept. You cannot surrender like this. This is all I can do. Right? Because whatever justification you may give, that won't be accepted. And inside, you have to keep wanting. You don't have to feel bad if you surrender. Because you are surrendering to yourself. She is not Tarubain. She is Rajni Patel. Mm -hmm. Then what is the problem? She may feel that I am Taru. I am a unique personality. I am the best person in the world. There is no problem. Let her feel like that. But when you feel like that, that projection itself you will not have any problem. Right? Does this ah. happen because of our past karmas? Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, the past karmas always play their role, but this is because of our individuality. Hmm. We feel I am, that's it. Hmm. But we have to gradually understand we are. I am is there, but we are is important. And when that is focused, then those individual things will not matter. Yeah. Like, just imagine if your left leg is not doing well, doesn't your right leg take care of the left leg and you keep moving? Mm -hmm. That's where we have to understand that how our body adjusts easily. In the same way, between individuals, this adjustment, if it is um, resolved, if it is decided, then you will not have any problem. Anytime you look at the, I mean, in the mirror, don't you say you look great? You won't you say that you are still young? Even at 60 or 70 or 80, you always say like that. That's how you have to deal with others. Accepting the other person and adjusting <laughs> with that person, your association will remain forever and it will be amicable. It will be very cordial. Everyone wants someone to die for me. Then I will leave for that person. Don't you think like that? <laughs> this is a tragedy of life. Huh? So you decide to die for the person, the person will live for you, and that's how your life will go on. In fact, when you die for the person, the person gets the life. And the person starts dying for you. And you get the life. But first, you have to start. So you have to decide between you that who will do, who will be the first one to hit the nail. Ladies first. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? Prakriti <clears throat> will play its part. Mm -hmm. So we have to make a decision and then there is no problem. So that's why our resolutions play a vital role. So with the right understanding of this holistic inner science, our life will eventually become wonderful. Okay, is that's there it. any other question? Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll wrap it up and Nipaganji, if you want to again give some homework, you know, this last statement what uh, really made me think uh, you are, that you finally come to the conclusion that you are wholly and solely responsible for yourself. 
no matter what no matter what happens you know you are wholly and solely responsible and with that if we live in humanity uh what happens is just suffer is at fault at just everywhere avoid clashes i think we can have a very good cordial uh relationship at least among our uh, loved ones that's my conclusion so uh deepak anji any homework you want to give or and then give yes uh, i i would like to uh, further go deeper into the doing part and the knowing part many times you know you say i understand i don't understand now this understanding and don't understanding i don't understand is again of the body self and you know that like how tarubin says that i don't understand then you know that tarubin don't understand tarubin says i understand then you know that tarubin understands so this is how you have to differentiate within yourself that the understanding or the misunderstanding part is not mine i remain as knower of my understanding or any misunderstanding both so it's like we will try to become and remain mindful about many time we say oh i don't understand and we say no i understand then we connect i with ourselves but that i is again body self i the small i whereas the big i the capital i always remain as a knower and that's how we feel experience and understand the knower and that's how we will start living as knower don't get carried away by the body self activity of doing liking disliking understanding don't un- not understanding and all that 